I have a whole bunch of other effects down here which I can apply to my text. So I do have some pre-made movements. Got things like exploding. Click on the explode there, you can see there's all sorts of different kinds of presets. I've got shines and sparkles and so on. Let's just grab hold of one of those and then drag it onto the timeline. Just going to zoom out a little bit on the timeline there so I can see the whole thing. Grab hold of that and drag it and put it somewhere. Now you notice as I'm dragging it here, it goes underneath the text. And I've got a little purple bar which is the duration of that preset. And when I let go, it puts it in and it adds in an extra line underneath the text. And you can see there I've now got an effect which basically does this. I can make it bigger, so just drag it out and you can see the entire effect there over the center area. So it's a little bit of a glow as it goes through. You can see some little dots on here. These are keyframes. That tells me that I've got different things which are basically animating that glow. You know, it's like a light coming out of the back of the text. So there's this little green dot that moves across that represents the light and these things represent the keyframes of it and it gets brighter and darker. If you want to actually adjust them, then you can just click on the little triangle and open it up, and there you can see some got various parameters, and they're all keyframed. So I can do things like stick some more keyframes in. Now, down here, I can't actually see the parameters to change. I can see what they're called. To actually get to the parameters themselves, they're over here. When I was moving it around, it's under 3D Transform, but now I've also got a shine effect, which is this and I can control the bits of that shine effect. And here I can you know, boost it so it gets brighter or less length or blends them together more or less. And you can see I've now added another keyframe. Let's close that down so you can get a better view of the whole thing. A very interesting thing happens if you put this kind of sparkle in an area. Now if I set this area to play in per line, shove the glow in the middle of it, and press play you'll see what happens. Now you can probably see there is I've got an effect which sort of starts off and glows as it goes across it and because I'm on a, an area that's playing in per line you know, once the first line's in I get the effect. Next line has its own glowy effect so this glowy effect is no longer that length it's however long it needs to be to show each line. If I was to put this into play in by character you notice how that means I get very, very fast glows. Regardless of the fact it seems to take up a lot of space on the timeline, and that glow is popping up and going away on each character as it comes in. Which actually can be quite a nice effect. I want to stick another one on there, grab hold of another one, drag it and drop it, and this time I'm going to drop it on the end. You notice it adds in another line, open it up, and now you can see it as it disappears, it flashes away. So this time it's flashing away blue, because that's what that preset was. Of course I can always have a look at it, find the blue one, and then change stuff to do with this. Now, over here I didn't really go through these features, but they're pretty obvious. Just grab hold of one and fiddle and you'll see exactly what it does. You do have a bunch of different kind of coloured presets. Apparently this is what heaven looks like. That's what an aurora looks like. USA whatever. And you can change any of these colors. So you can see this glow is made up of five different colors. I can just click on the little box and change any of the colors and customize away to my heart's content. You can see there what's happening. This is the very outside color, which is not there very much. It's actually quite light. That one is the very inside color. So if I change that, suddenly you're getting a green glow and so on. Put that back to white. Green looks pretty horrible. So there we are. I've now got a title that's laid out with a couple of shines going on it. I've got all sorts of effects down here. So shines, sparkles and that sort of thing, warps. I'm going to take that wormhole effect and drop that down there as well. And let's just put it over there. Now you can see I've got two effects there which are combining with the main one. Now you might be able to see what's happening there. Let's just turn this by on to by line. So I'm now getting that kind of warpy hole at the same time as I'm getting the glow. Put the warp first, you can see it warps first and then glows. So it might have just stacking stuff up. Now all these effects are being done by your graphics cards. If you've got a very good graphics card, you'll get lots more effects out of it. It'll be able to play a lot more without rendering. Inside of this title itself, there is no way of rendering stuff. So if I start to stack on half a ton of effects that it can't cope with, then it just won't be able to play it properly. Let's put a sparkle on there as well. 
it'll just get to the stage, and I think it has now, where it's not playing it properly, it's not playing it at the right speed, because you simply cannot render inside of VizTitle. VizTitle supports ATI cards, and it supports NVIDIA cards. Get a fairly good one for a couple of hundred pounds, and then you'll find you can do an awful lot of real-time effects. In fact, most of my stuff in VizTitle I don't have to render. Sometimes when I'm stacking stuff up, and especially putting on some of the shines and some of the other sparkly effects or some of the particle effects, I occasionally have to render. Most of the time I don't. But then I do use very nice graphics cards.